Hello everyone, today I will be showing you how I made my gyroscope tesla meter for IYPT 2019 problem number 12. The raw material that I have access to are copper sheet stock and also brass rods. And these will be the material that I will be using to make my gyroscope tesla meter. First, I cut out a piece of copper sheet stock and I drew a circle on it. You can do this with either a compass or a caliper. Be sure to make the scratch mark nice and clear because we will be using this a bit later. I also measured and marked out the length of the brass rod that I will need. Next I used tin snips to carefully cut out the circle making sure to not cut into the circle. This will be a rough cut and we'll be cleaning this up later. Then I used a hacksaw to cut the brass rod into length. Now I can clamp my copper sheet into the bench vise and I can carefully take out the edges using a file. This step is very important because the closer to a circle your copper sheet stock is, the better the stability of the gyroscope will be. Next I clamp my brass rod into the bench vise and I use a rough file to make a conical tip on the end of the brass rod. I repeated this for both sides of the brass rod and at the end we can see a rough shape of the conical tip beginning to form. Then I can refine this conical shape better by using a finer file. This step you should also take a bit more care because the better the tip is, the sharper it is, the less friction it will have when the gyroscope is spinning. Then I will file a small section of the rod flat so that later on I can drill a small hole. This hole will be the place where we feed our string through so we can pull the gyroscope in order to start it. After that, I secured my rod onto the drill press and I begin drilling this small hole. This step, you can choose to use a drill press if you have one, but if you don't have one, it doesn't matter. You can just clamp it down and drill it with a hand drill. This hole does not have to be perfectly precise and does not have to go through the center of the rod. As long as this hole could house the string that you want to push through, it is perfectly fine. Now I can choose a drill bit that has a size that is slightly smaller than the diameter of the rod. And I will drill a hole into the flat copper sheet stock that we have prepared earlier. After drilling, we can use a file or some sandpaper to clean up the edges. We can use both fine and coarse sandpaper to clean it up and the rough surfaces will prepare us for our soldering process. Now we can push the center shaft through the plate and now we can also apply some flux so that our solder would actually stick to the metal. After this is done, we could coil our soft solder wire around the shaft and we could push this near the joint. And now we're ready to heat it up. I will now use a blowtorch to heat up the solder and the joint slowly and evenly and when the solder melts, it should flow through the cracks and fill up the joint. And after this is complete, we have a solid joint that will not fall apart as the gyroscope is spinning. I made a stand for the gyroscope by using two pieces of threaded rod, the corresponding nuts and washer, and also a few pieces of spring. The top and bottom are made out of aluminum, and as you can see on the aluminum flat, there is a small indentation, and this will accept the conical tip of our gyroscope. We could start our gyroscope by first threading a piece of string through the hole that we have drilled earlier, and then we could rotate the entire gyroscope so that the string coils around the shaft. and then. When you want to start it, just pull the string and the gyroscope will begin spinning. For this problem, the problem statement asks us to use conducting but non-ferromagnetic material. We know that copper and brass are both good conductors, but they're not ferromagnetic. When this gyroscope spins inside a magnetic field, it will decelerate. And the reason for this is because the magnetic field would cause eddy currents inside the gyroscope plate. According to Faraday's law, as long as there is a change in magnetic flux, we should induce a current inside a closed loop. And the direction of this current follows Lenz's law, which the current will generate 
a magnetic field that has a direction that opposes the change in magnetic flux. So as the gyroscope is spinning, it goes through regions of non-uniform magnetic field, and this is how the eddy currents are generated. Because copper is a conductor with non-zero resistance, these eddy currents will essentially lose energy in the form of heat. The faster the gyroscope spins, the larger the change in the magnetic flux, and therefore more currents will be induced in the plate. And as the gyroscope slows down, this effect gradually decreases in strength. And eventually, at the end, all of the energy stored in the rotating gyroscope will be lost due to heat through this mechanism. I'll show you some more footage that I filmed with this gyroscope, and if you found this video helpful, please make sure to like and subscribe down below, and I'll see you next week. Bye!